Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem, worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, the salvations of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. But the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Israelites, the saying, you must know where you came from to know where you're going, is very true. The beginning for the Israelites that are scattered to the four corners of this world starts with slavery. It doesn't matter how long our ancestors live in this world. It doesn't matter that we are the original people made in the image of the Most High. Everything pertaining to us starts with slavery in the beast system. When our ancestors were forced into the beast religion by the workers of iniquity, our ancestors didn't start from the beginning in religion. Everything started with the New Testament idol God called Jesus the Christ. The indigenous black people are expected to worship Jesus without a word. The workers of iniquity and religion made sure to indoctrinate our people with the doctrine of the old covenant is fulfilled and the new testament fulfilled the old testament. The high-level workers of iniquity and religion make sure our focus is on the Son of God that died to save the world, as well as to take away the sins of the world. As a descendant of slave, you're expected to forget about your roots. When it comes to the indigenous Black people, everything about our roots before slavery was erased. The synagogue of Satan made sure to make it appear as if the Most High created us when slavery began. Israelites, I can't emphasize on the importance of working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Israelites, you cannot depend on the very people who deceive you for all these years to tell you the truth. The truth is not in them. Their father who controlled the beast system is the father of lies. Stop looking to the other species of mankind to validate your existence. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The purpose of the seed of the fallen is to carry out the will of Satan. Their goal is to interfere with your salvation. You will not find the truth in the beast system created by the Satans for the followers of the kingdom of darkness. When the Most High called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, the Most High called out his people to tell them the truth. The word of the Most High said the truth of the Most High's words sanctify you. Not only does the word sanctify you, but the truth makes you free. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Israelites, when it comes to the word of the Most High, you cannot start in the middle towards the end of the story to comprehend the word of the Most High and the truth that it possesses. If you begin to read a book from middle to end, you will not understand the story. The book won't make sense to you. You will gain a little knowledge, but not enough to know what is going on. In order for you to know what is going on, you would have to start from the beginning of the book to get the complete understanding of the story. Likewise, Israelites, you cannot start your journey of returning to serve the Father in the spirit and in truth with the New Testaments, as well as with the doctrines of Rome. You must go back to the very beginning to understand who you are and what is expected of you. Additionally, how the Most High will work through you to carry out his will in this generation. 
The reason so many in the awakening are confused and lost, a lot of Israelites are not starting over from the beginning. A lot of Israelites live by the doctrines of Rome. How have you returned to the father if the doctrines of Rome is first place in your heart? Israelites, in order for you to be transformed, you have to let the most high renew your mind. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If you begin your journey of returning to the Father with the New Testament, you won't understand how our people end up in the positions they are in today. You won't understand why the New Testament is focused on a God that has no affiliation with the Father. It would be difficult for you to see the deception. Christianity is focused on Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Every authorized version of the Bible made available to the public revealed that the New Testament is about their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Somehow the letters in the New Testament are written to the 12 tribes of Israel, not to the Jewish people, but to the 12 tribes of Israel. Remember, Israelites, there's the most high chosen people and there's the world's chosen people. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Israelites, James chapter 1 verse 1 is a great example of duality in the scriptures. If you start your journey of returning to the Father with the New Testament, you won't understand how the story in the Old Testament starts with Adam and Eve, the first of our kind, as well as the Most High selecting the Israelites to be their God and to uphold the everlasting covenant, to now needing a savior that will save the world and all people. There's a huge gap between the story of the Israelite bloodline journey with their God to the Israelites gaining a new identity and name in the New Testament, as well as needing to accept a savior. The Most High, the Father said he was our savior. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. Why do we need to accept a savior when we already have a savior, the father? The father made multiple covenants to save us and all of the righteous that descend from Adam and Eve. The Israelites in the Old Testament knew their God very well. Our ancestors had a relationship with the father. Our ancestors taught the heathens the laws, statutes, and commandments. Somehow in the New Testament, we are waiting on a Jewish God to save us. What change? Sin was always present in our people. The Most High went as far as to call our people stiff neck. Every time our ancestors humbled themselves, the Most High helped them when their enemies gathered against them. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria, and behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is En Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared, and set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord, even out of all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. Moreover, the children of Ammon passed over Jordan to fight also against Judah and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was sore distressed. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, saying, We have sinned against thee, both because we have forsaken our God and also served Balaam. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Did not I deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites, from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines, the Zidonians also? And the Amalekites and the Maonites did oppress you, and ye cried to me, and I delivered you out of their hand. Yet ye have forsaken me, and served other gods, wherefore I will deliver you no more. Go, and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen, let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. And the children of Israel said unto the Lord, We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Deliver us only, we pray thee this day. And they put away the strange gods from among them, 
and served the Lord, and his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Matter of fact, every generation before the coming of the Messiah, every time our people humbled themselves, obey and serve the Father, the Most High intervened on their behalf. The Father destroyed our ancestors' enemies without our ancestors needing to accept a Savior. Our ancestors struggled with the sin of idolatry and many other sins. Whenever our ancestors humbled themselves and returned to the Father, the Most High helped them. The scripture said, your enemies will surely gather, but when they gather, they will fall. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Your ways must please the Most High for him to plead your case. Israelites, the Most High have yet to scatter your enemies despite humbling yourself when you made a covenant with the Son of God in religion. The Most High is still waiting for his people to return to him. According to religion, we need a savior to intervene on our behalf to get help from the Father. Israelites, you've heard in the scriptures how our ancestors repent, humble themselves, get rid of the idols among them, fast and pray. The Most High took vengeance on their behalf and destroyed their enemies. Presently, our people made a covenant with Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. The Israelites give their Lord and Savior tithes and offerings, fellowship with their Savior multiple times a week in the temples made with man's hands, dedicated their life to the Savior of the world. Our people accepted the Messiah to save them, yet the curses plagued their life and they remain at the bottom. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Israelites, what change from our ancestors humbling themselves in the times of Jehoshaphat to the Father, getting rid of the idols among them to receive help from the Most High? If you're doing the same things today that our ancestors have done to see the Most High intervene on their behalf, yet the curses still plague your life despite the Roman God dying for your sins, something is standing between the Most High and His people if you're humbling yourself. The only difference between what the ancestors have done to receive help from the Father and you is the Son of God. The Roman God is the only difference between you and our ancestors. A lot of Israelites accepted the Messiah, the Roman God in religion, as well as in the awakening. The heathens have burned down every town you've created that became successful. Every indigenous black nation that appeared to be getting strong, the synagogue of Satan managed to destabilize. Where are those promises the Roman God made to you for accepting him as your Lord and Savior? Where's the power and authority you have in Jesus' name? As well as the power the Most High gave to you to trot down your enemies. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Israelites, I want to make you think. The time has come for you to really take your journey with the Most High seriously. If you truly return to serve the Father in the awakening, what is standing between you and Him? If you're not seeing the presence of the Father in your life, the idols of your Father's house continue to stand in your way. Many of you made multiple covenants with the heathens and their gods. In the process of serving the idols of the heathens, you forsake the everlasting covenant the Most High made with you. The Most High said he would never leave us nor forsake us. The only thing that would separate us from the Most High is sin. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. If sin separates you from the Most High and the Savior of the world, the Roman God, many Israelites and indigenous black people made a covenant with, took away your sins, sin should not be separating you from the Father. The Savior of the world took care of sin on your behalf according to the doctrines of religion. What is stopping the Most High from pleading your cause? Remember, the awakening is prophesied. The scripture said you will remember yourselves in the land of your captivity. 
For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. The Israelites and indigenous black people have accepted the Roman God as their Lord and Savior in religion and Yahshua as their God in the awakening. Both the Roman God and Yahshua in the awakening have taken away your sins according to the doctrines of religion and many Israelites in the awakening. If that was true, how come your sins are separating you from the Most High? If you have returned to the Father by giving the Son the glory that belongs to the Father, why is the Most High pleading with you and your children to return to him still? Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? For many Israelites, returning to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth is the same way they did in religion, praising and worshiping the Messiah. The only difference between the Israelites in the awakening and the Israelites in religion, the Israelites in the awakening know that the Most High look like them as well as the Messiah. They are aware that they are the Israelites the Bible speak of. In other words, they know their true identity. Majority of the Israelites in the awakening continue in the doctrines of Rome by combining the Father and the Son. They continue in worshiping the Messiah. Israelites, you must go back to the beginning to properly return to the Father. When you start from the beginning, you will see that the Most High does not change. But I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. The Most High said to his people in the book of Isaiah that they don't know him. When you allow the Most High to renew your mind, you will begin to know who the Father is. You will know about the covenant the Most High made with Adam and our fathers. When you know what the everlasting covenant promised, the Satans can't deceive you with their lies in religion and in the beast culture. A lot of Israelites didn't know that Adam and Eve shed their blood and offered their blood to the Most High as a form of forgiveness of sin. Many Israelites are not aware that the Most High accepted their offering and established a covenant with Adam and Eve to send his word to shed his blood like Adam and Eve did to give Adam and all of the righteous seed of Adam forgiveness of sin and salvation. Sin is transgressing the laws of the Most High. All the Israelites and indigenous black people who continuously break the laws of the Most High will surely die regardless if they accepted the Roman God, or Yahshua as their Savior. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, The evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Israelites, returning to the Father is doing exactly that, returning to the Father. The God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, the one we made the covenant with on Mount Sinai, the Father. To return to the Father, true repentance must occur and upholding the covenant the Most High made with you and your fathers before you. The laws, statutes, and commandments should be your priority. All the glory, praises, and worship you have in your heart, it all belongs to the Father. The word of the Most High said the true worshipers will worship the Father. The scriptures did not say the Son, but the Father in spirit and in truth. If you're worshiping the Son, are you a true worshiper? But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. If you're worshiping the Roman God or Yahshua in the awakening, you're giving the glory of the Father to another. Israelites, listen to me carefully. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging and appreciating what the Messiah has done. However, all of your praises and glory goes to the Father. If you give the glory and worship that belongs to the Father to another, that is including the Son, that is idolatry. The Messiah said in the scriptures, he is not seeking his own glory. There is one who seek that glory. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Our people have struggled with the sin of idolatry from the beginning. 
In the book of Matthew, the Messiah said to Satan that we should worship the Father and him only should we serve. Nowhere in the scriptures does the Messiah say for you to worship him. The Messiah always direct the people to the Father. The Messiah was always about his Father's business. As the people of the Most High, we should be about our Father's business. You can't be about our Father's business if your focus is on the Son. The scripture said the Messiah is the mediator between the Most High and men. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Israelites, what is a mediator? According to the dictionary, a mediator is a person who attempts to make people involved in a conflict come to an agreement. A mediator does not decide the outcome, but only helps the parties understand. The scripture said the Messiah is a mediator that stands between the most high and men. Why are you worshiping him? A mediator is not the father. A mediator is a person that communicates between two parties. If the Messiah is a mediator, why do you place him in the position of the Most High? The scripture said the Messiah intercede and advocate to the Father for us. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. What is an intercessor? An intercessor is a person that intervene on the behalf of another. An intercessor in the scriptures is a person who intervene on the behalf of another person, usually in prayer. A mediator and an intercessor is one in the same. The scriptures made known that the Messiah intercede on our behalf through prayer. If the Messiah intercede on your behalf and he is a mediator between you and the Most High, why do you give the glory of the Father to him? The Most High is well pleased with our Messiah. That is why he made him prince over our people and all the righteous. The Most High will use the Messiah to save his people. However, all the glory and praises belong to the Father. The Most High will not share his glory with another. Israelites, don't believe the doctrines of Rome of making the false Messiah your God. Returning to the Father is returning to the covenant. The very covenant our ancestors and us said we will obey. Israelites, how long will you forsake the covenants for the idols of the heathens? The Most High will never break the covenants he made with us. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. In the commandments the Most High gave to our people, he said there should be no other gods before him. That is the first commandment. Today, Israelites and the indigenous black people give the glory of the Most High, the Father, to the Roman God and Yahshua. The awakening shouldn't imitate religion. There's nothing religious about returning to the Father to serve him in the spirit and in truth. We are spiritual beings, not religious beings. Returning to the Father equals obedience. Returning to serve the Father in the spirit and in truth require us to unlearn the doctrines of devils taught to us in religion. The awakening shouldn't imitate religion. The Satans use religion to imitate the Most High. Religion has a form of godliness, but far from the truth, the word of the Most High brings to the people that are being sanctified by his words. The scripture said in the last days, during perilous times, some of our people will forever learning, but never be able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Israelites, don't let it be you in the last days, forever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. We should be elevating from glory to glory in the awakening. The doctrines from the beast religion is not the truth of the word of the most high. We shouldn't continue with the doctrines of religion in the awakening. Over 6 billion people are trapped in religion. Over 3 billion people believe the Roman God is the father in the flesh and worship the Roman God. Many Israelites in the awakening continue in the Messiah worship through Yahshua. They believe they are returning to the Father by worshiping the Son. In the process of you worshiping the Son, the sin of idolatry is causing a separation between you and the Most High. 
Returning to the Father means returning to the creator of all. The Son will help you get to the Father by following his example. If you follow the example the Messiah set, then you would give the Father all the glory just as he did. The amount of people that believe the Messiah is the most high, the Father in the flesh, is a large population. The scripture said, broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many are on that road. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. The scripture said only a remnant will return. Despite the Israelites and the indigenous black people are as numerous as the sand of the sea, only a remnant will return. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. Three billion is not a remnant. The population of people that know the Messiah is not the father in the flesh is very small. The population of people who truly know who the real lamb of the most high is, is even smaller. This channel has a little over 40,000 subscribers. Out of the 40,000 subscribers, I'm estimating two to 3,000 know the identity of the real Messiah. Israelites, 3 billion to 3,000 is very narrow. If you believe my numbers are unrealistic, one family repopulated this earth to 8 billion today. Noah's family in total was eight people. Eight is even smaller to the two to three thousand on this channel that truly return to the Father and know who the Lamb of the Most High is. Narrow is the road that leads to life. A few there be that finds it. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. I will say it again, over 3 billion people accepted the Roman God and worshiped the idol. Over 6 billion are trapped in religion in the beast system. Religion is the broad road that leads to destruction, and many are on that road. The Hebrew Israelite religion in the other awakening is a part of the 6 billion. The Most High is calling all true worshipers to worship him in spirit and in truth. That is what the Father is looking for in the awakening. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Israelites, you can continue to pursue the idols of the heathens and persuade yourself that you have returned to the Father. As for me and my house, I've returned to serve the one that said he is the God of my fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The one that said, I will write my name on their forehead. The one that said, he made a covenant with me the day his presence descend on Mount Sinai. He it is that I serve. I want to make sure there's no confusion about me. Every day I choose to worship the Father and him only do I serve. I don't make decisions for any of you. When you begin to worship the Father, you will see how your life change. You will begin to see the power of the Most High operating in your life. Your enemies will come against you one way, but they will flee before you seven ways. I've seen it for myself, and I can testify this to be true. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Serving the Father is the way. The Messiah tried to lead many to the Father. Some followed the Messiah and found the Father. However, over the years, religion corrupt the word of the Most High, changed the role of the Deliverer, transformed him into a God. Now the people worship and serve the created things rather than the Creator. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Israelites, it is important that you understand that the Messiah is not the most high in the flesh. The Satans in religion presented the false Messiah that came in his own name that way to deceive you and to establish a covenant with you. 
the purpose of establishing the covenant to get you away from the most high, the father. When you begin to worship the Roman God, you're guilty of idolatry. That is why in the beast system, despite accepting Christianity's God and Messiah, we remain at the bottom. Our enemies continue to rule over us. We did exactly what the scriptures prophesied we would do in the land of our captivity. Serve other gods. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. A major problem that is happening in the awakening is that Israelites are taking that same God, the Roman God, changing certain elements about that God, and they continue to worship that God. Israelites, that is a big problem. I have to sound the alarm and warn you about this big mistake. Israelites, you can change the name and appearance to the Roman God. No matter what, he is not the father. He is not the one you made a covenant with on Mount Sinai. The Messiah that came in the father's name, his purpose was to lead you back to the father. Instead of following the example the Messiah set for us, the Israelites and indigenous black people begin to worship the Messiah. Confirming what the scripture said in Romans chapter 1 verse 25, they worship and serve the created things rather than the creator. Israelites, the Most High did not reveal to our people where he buried Moses because he knew that his people would worship him. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. And Moses was an hundred and twenty years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. If you participate in Messiah worship, you're continuing in the doctrines of Rome. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging the Messiah and appreciating what he has done. What he did was his destiny. That is why he came to fulfill everything that was written about him. Adapting Rome's doctrine of Messiah being the father in the flesh is false and dangerous. You give room to the spirit of idolatry. The Most High said he hate the sin of idolatry. That is why the first commandment addressed this great sin. The real Messiah have been trying to lead the Israelites and all of Adam's descendants back to the father. Too many Israelites and indigenous black people cannot understand this truth. The Roman God has blinded your mind that you cannot perceive the truth. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Give the heathens back their God. So many have forsaken the real Messiah and the Father for the Roman God and the false Messiah in religion. Israelites and indigenous black people, if you've truly returned to serve the Father in this great awakening, you will know that there is no one else besides the Father. In addition, you will not follow the stranger's voice. The true worshipers of the Most High know his voice and they would not dare follow another. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Israelites, it's important that you don't limit yourself to the scriptures in the Bible. You have to read the scriptures that were removed from the Bible to get a better understanding. Starting from the New Testament will only confuse you. The everlasting covenant the Most High made with us is still in effect. You won't have any knowledge of that covenant if the New Testament said it was fulfilled. Our people spend a lot of time in exile and captivity. The time has come for you to decide to serve the Most High and return to the Father. 
When the time came for our ancestors to leave the wilderness to inherit the promised land, Joshua, the son of Nun, said to the Israelites in his generation before they crossed over the Jordan, Choose this day whom you will serve. Joshua said, As for me and my house, I will serve the Most High, our Father. Israelites, this is not the first time in our family's history such decision needed to be made. Our people played the harlot in every generation and found themselves having to return to the Father. This generation is no different. You have to choose this day whom you're going to serve. As for me and my house, I choose the Father. Israelites, choose wisely. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. But the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the way wherein we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites which dwelt in the land. Therefore will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. 